Hello the YouTubes, Ash back once again with another retro movie review. Now with Sin City a Dame to Kill for due out in cinemas very soon, I thought now would be a good time to have a look back at 2005's Sin City, directed by Robert Rodriguez and starring a whole host of people. Let's get on with it. <laughs> So Sin City came out in 2005, it was directed by Robert Rodriguez as I said, and it was based off Frank Miller's graphic novels of the same name, well I say the same name, they're all a series of short stories based in Sin City. Within this film there are three separate stories, bookended by two shorter ones, and I know that I said in my Watchmen review that that was the most faithful comic book adaptation you're likely to see. Well, I totally forgot about this one because this one is literally ripped from the pages of the graphic novel. They use the panels of the graphic novel as a storyboard. It's shot to look like the graphic novels in a stylized black and white with only highlighted colors every now and then. It's one of the most beautiful films you're likely to see. Just the way it's shot and the way it's done is fantastic I love it and it's not just the art style and the way that it's shot that's like comic books they've lifted the dialogue from the pages as well so a lot of people might take issue with the way the dialogue is and also the way that it it's portrayed the way it's delivered because it can come off like bad acting but it's all done on purpose it's it's stylized it's meant to feel like you're watching a live action graphic novel it's like if you're reading the pages of it this is what it should play out like in your head so I know a lot of people will criticise some of the performances and yeah, a couple of times it can look dodgy. I mean, uh, one of Jessica Alba's first lines is pretty wooden. But at the same time, if you read graphic novels and you read comic books, you'll know that the way that the dialogue's written in those is quite different to how people would speak, not just in real life, but also on screen. So it does sound clunky sometimes. It does sound wooden, but it's all deliberate. And that's what I like about it. I like that Robert Rodriguez didn't compromise anything with his vision on this. He pulled it off the pages and he put it on the screen and that's how it is. To the point where he, there isn't even a screenwriting credit on this. It's just written by Frank Miller. Not written for the screen by Frank Miller. Just he wrote this years ago and I've put it on the screen for you to watch. I can't think of any other films that have done that. So let's get into what Sin City is about. Like I said, there's three separate stories bookended by two really short, not significant stories starring Josh Hartnett. The first of which opens the movie and it was done before Robert Rodriguez had even got permission to shoot these films from Frank Miller. It was sort of done as a look what I can do for you type thing. After that, we sort of, there's a setup for the third installment of the stories which sees Bruce Willis as an old haggard cop he's pushing 60 he's on his last job before retirement yeah a bit Danny Glover he's going to rescue a young girl called Nancy Callahan who's been held by a serial rapist who does all kinds of unimaginable shit to kids this is a pretty dark story they're all pretty dark to be fair and something goes wrong within that story and Bruce Willis has put out a commission for a long time. Then it cuts to the next story, which is based around Marv, who is played by Mickey Rourke. And Marv is this, this big hulking beast of a man who can just take a beat and, and laugh it off as if nothing had ever happened. He's been set up for the murder of a prostitute, and he's got to go and find out who's behind it all and put it all right. There's a lot of violence in this, a lot of really stylized over the top bloody action and it looks amazing like the way that it's shot all black and white with the blood coming out so vividly white quite often and then like i say every so often you'll get a highlight like maybe red just like a spot of red on the screen i can't put into words how much i love the aesthetic of these films elijah wood plays a little creepy sort of cannibal type kid with crazy long nails and he has a big fight with uh, Mickey Rourke but what I like about this is I only just found this out yesterday when I was looking up on IMDB Mickey Rourke and Elijah Wood didn't even meet until the film's premiere that's how bizarrely this film was shot like it's all done on green screen obviously but despite the fact that Mickey Rourke and Elijah Wood have a big dust up in the middle of the film they were never on set at the same time and you would never know that 
looking at it and that's what another thing that just blows my mind about how good Sin City is second story revolves around a guy called Dwight who is a murderer who's just recently changed his face so he can go unrecognised by the cops and he's played by Clive Owen he's got a thing with Brittany Murphy who's a barmaid and he gets involved with her ex played by Benicio Del Toro who was practically unrecognisable in this things go a bit wrong between them and then Dwight's got to kind of put it right he ends up in a part of town that's run by a group of prostitutes who are pretty much the law in that part of town and they're led by Rosario Dawson like I say the cast in this film is just amazing I'm going to leave a few out because I'll not remember everyone who's in it also also in this story we have Benicio Del Toro as I've said uh, Brittany Murphy Clive Owen Rosario Dawson Michael Clark Duncan's in this bit I think this part of the movie must have been cursed or something because we've lost two actors um, since this was filmed. Brittany Murphy, obviously, and Michael Clark Duncan, who was in this segment, have both passed away now, so there must have been some kind of curse over this movie. You know, like Hollywood likes to play these kind of things up. Uh, there's also a segment within this segment that was directed by Quentin Tarantino, just because Rod Robert Rodriguez wanted him to get his hands on high-definition cameras and move, in, move with the times sort of thing. Uh, so there's a scene with... Benicio Del Toro and Clive Owen in a car that was directed by Quentin Tarantino. The third segment goes back to Bruce Willis's character. It's gone eight years since the events from the beginning of the movie. Nancy Callahan's all grown up. She's been sending uh, letters to Bruce Willis for the past eight years. There's a whole political subplot in this based on the fact that the rapist from the beginning of the film that Hartigan deals some pretty severe punishment to turns out to be the son of a senator and they want to get back at heart again so what they do is set him up so they lead him back to Nancy and then they kidnap Nancy and he's heart again's got to go back and save Nancy from what is now a very disfigured Nick Stahl Nick Stahl who you might remember from Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines if you ever watch that if you haven't don't but I think that's the only other thing I've ever seen him in but in this again he appears as himself sort of he appears as himself at the beginning, but then at the end he becomes a character called That Yellow Bastard. And he's all bald, he's got a pop belly, he is yellow. He's got... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's got false appendages, shall we say. I'll leave that again. If you haven't seen the film, I'll leave that for you to discover. The big theme that runs through all three stories is a kind of a love and loss type of situation where it's different kinds of love and there's different kinds of loss and there's different kinds of revenge acted out but that's the, the central kind of theme that pulls them all together there's obviously crisscross of characters the one thing I will say is the timeline kind of jumps where you might see a character who was killed off in one story but they're there in another story later on but that's because they're set on different timelines similarly the same kind of timeline jumps gonna happen in a dim to kill for you'll get characters in that who were killed in this movie but are back for the next one so you kinda got to keep your wits about you while you're watching it but I had to do a review of this because I watched it the other day for the first time in years and I forgot just how phenomenal this film is I'll, the way it's shot the way it's directed the action the dialogue and everything in it like I said it's just off the pages of a graphic novel it's fantastic I love it to absolute death and if I did at Ash Academy Awards on retro reviews it would be getting a five without a doubt if you haven't seen Sin City yet please go on and see it hopefully before a Dame to Kill For disappears out of the cinemas because I guarantee you'll want to go and see that as well. Saying that, it's not for everybody. I can't imagine recommending this to me mother. I don't think she'd appreciate it. If you kind of appreciate a different type of cinema style, then this one's definitely a one you want to get into. So what are your thoughts? Have you seen Sin City? Did you think it was as good as I think it is? Or do you have issue with it? Do you find the dialogue a bit too clunky? Or do you not like the fact that they've ripped the pages of the graphic novel and made them into motion pictures bloody hell motion pictures how fucking old am i so sound off below let me know what you think and as always leave a like below hit the subscribe button up there tell your friends tell your family but don't tell me ma'am and i will see you next time